Welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you how to code swaps on Radium. And it's very similar to the Jupyter Swap setup, but a, a little bit different. Obviously, they have their own APIs, which are different. But if we head over to the Radium docs, you can go to the Trade API we're going to be referencing. And then this shows all the parameters. And here is an example of the code. So Go ahead and start a new file in cursor or VS code, whatever you're using. And then we're just going to bring in these. So this is telling you, you need to install the radium SDK. I already have it. So go ahead and install that. And so we're just going to start pasting in these pieces of code. So there's all the imports. It tells us to get here is the key pair and RPC. This is the quote. We'll go over this so we understand. So this is Axios just gets a it's just a basically an API request. And so it goes to this this URL, which is the base URL here. And then this uh, endpoint and passes in all of this information here, which we will need to set in just a second. So very simple. You don't you don't need the radium api to do that either so or the radium sdk i mean so okay next we this is to serialize it so we'll just paste that in notice we're getting a bunch of errors or we'll handle those in just a second so this takes that information and deserializes it and then the next chunk signs and executes it and then they added this little section down here for setting a priority fee. Now you can use it uh, if you want to. You will only need this, this section right here if you want to do that. And it needs to be above this stuff. So let's put it just below our uh, exports, or our RPC and our secret key. Now go ahead and save this file because it complains about stuff if it's not saved. I'm going to call it radium.ts. You notice a bunch of errors kind of went away, but I, I've played around with this a little bit and I found that if you, it's, oh, this is one other note. So they're telling you in these instructions to import uh, with this config.ts and you can do that that's right here but um, I ran into issues when I was using this so uh, for this example I am gonna say don't use the config file in fact we're just gonna we can comment that out or even just get rid of that line and then of course that means we need to set our connection and key pair here now, I don't use this a secret key. I use uh, the format where it's uh, in a file generated by Solana's command line. So if you're using one like that, then you'll need to use this method of pulling up the secret key. Um, if you're doing a, just a base 58 secret key, you can just paste it in right here with their example of code. I'm just going to comment this out because I'm not using it. Um, and then this is going to be your RPC URL. So for this example, we don't really need a, a custom RPC. We're just going to use this one here. And then we do need to import some other stuff here that didn't get imported. Connection specifically. So we need to add the import for connection on Solana Web3. And then, so we've got our key pair set. We've got the connection configured. Now, this piece is just for the priority fee and all it's really doing, same thing. It's getting a URL that says, uh, here are the settings and you don't have to use this. You could honestly just go in and set the priority fee. You know, you could even just make a constant that says priority fee equals. And instead of using that 
set up, you could just have it be whatever you wanted it to be. And then you could just use that if you wanted. Uh, I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But this uh, dynamically gets what your priority fee should be based on network load and stuff, which is kind of cool. But if you want to set it manually, you can just do something like this. Uh, as you can see, now down on this part where we're fetching the quote, we're getting a bunch of errors. And part most of this is because we don't have these constants defined. And so we need to set those up. So we're going to go constant input mint. And then all of these ones here, output mint, amount, slippage, TX version, inputs is input sol is output sol and is v0 tx now obviously this one is your input min so whatever coin you're swapping from and whatever coin you're swapping to so those should be those addresses and then amount is how much you're swapping in lamp ports remember there's 1 billion lamp ports in one solana and then slippage this is this is set up to do it in percent so if you wanted to say like one percent that would be um or you can just if you want to define it in bps which is what i do then you just can get rid of that times 100 but for now we'll just set one percent slippage like that and then we'll leave this the way it is just for simplicity's sake and then i noticed that this um, I had to change this swap compute because this uh, interface is not defined. So I'll just change that to any. So that's the only real change there. And then coming down to the next little bit, this is so, th so our quote is good. So fetch quote. And then right here is where it fetches and builds builds the actual transaction so coming down here this sort of defines the format of what it should come back as and then this is the endpoint that it's calling this is that compute lamp ports or com compute unit price so this is the priority fee so if you want to use the dynamic method of priority fee just leave it how it is but if you want to custom set it you can either just set the number right here or you can use that constant that we just defined. Um, no, we're not a string. It's not a string. Priority fee. So uh, like that. And Or you could even just plug in the number, right? So you could say 100,000 land ports for our priority fee. Uh, I do like the dynamic version, but you know, if it's super congested or something, I don't know. I don't have to play around with that. I do like the idea of having it compute a what it thinks will help your send to get through so it might be best to just leave it with the dynamic but uh you can do whatever you want so what was that data dot data dot what was that string data dot data dot default dot h and then so coming down here now this input and output account, these are the ATA accounts uh, that hold your input and output coin. And you don't have to have these. So we're just going to get rid of those two lines. And it, I don't know why you would want those. I guess if it was going to a different account, but uh, this will just send it to the accounts that exist or get created under your address. So we don't need those two lines. And then... This part is just getting back this information and mapping that information into an actual transaction. And then here we go. And this actually is the part that sends them. So pretty straightforward. Um, the biggest issue I ran into is, is importing it from the config. I, I ran into all kinds of issues doing that. And um, so if you need those, uh, only reason that would be an issue is if you needed these fetch it to count data, which you know you might need if you're doing more advanced stuff. But for this, I think we're good. Oh, we got errors here. So 
because we've got await functions here, we're just going to encapsulate all of our code here into a uh, function. So starting with the first await below our constants, we're going to say async function ray swap uh, like that with with two parentheses and an opening curly brace. And then we come down here to the bottom and then we do the closing curly brace. And then for some reason they were missing a couple closing curly braces. So we have to do three closing curly braces at the bottom and then ray swap, uh, and then our open and closing parentheses. And that's it. That should be a working swap right there and let's test it out make sure you set your amount to something smaller when you're testing out and then uh, yeah so the tx version v0 and all this other stuff is input is input sol then you need to if your input is not solana then you change that um i'm not sure if those are even required um it doesn't even talk about those uh okay so that's it that's the that's the setup so let's try running it what was the name of this oh wait we're still getting an error what is this oh so so we need to we actually need to move this because this has an await in it too I forgot this was way up here so we got to move that down inside of the function there we go no errors and then whoops did i just accidentally close it no there we go so now we're good to try it so we're saved now we're gonna go open up command prompt ts node what was it radium.ts all right. Oh, it's because my key pair isn't in that file. So no such file directory, key pair, whatever. So I have it in the previous directory. So I just need a, another dot there. Save. I forgot. I made a new folder. And then bam. Did it. Bam, there it is. So that data right there is the base 64 encoded transaction and so this is the actual signature of the signed transaction so uh that's that's it and what i might do here is come down here to this uh or was that sending right here this tx id what you could do is you could do a Oops. Console log uh, txid, but you could say um, something like txid. I want to do http colon. Oops. Http soul scan io slash tx plus the tx id so now what that will do is that'll output an actual link to soul scan in the console so let's try it again so and this you can turn this stuff off by disabling the con uh console log i think it's this one here you can just comment that one out but we're, we're just going to leave it uh, for now but radium.ts let's let it run and bam sending it does need to get that confirmed i would actually move this up above the confirmed thing because bam like that sometimes they don't get the response that it was confirmed. And so by moving it right here, you get that link before it, you get the confirmed response. Let me try running it one more time. It might still be 
lagging up with our previous send. See, I've had issues with a lot of the uh, getting responses back a lot of the times and the on the confirmation. So you could even have it so it doesn't doesn't wait for the confirmation at all just by commenting out that section right there. And then sending txid. That's pretty much it. And yeah, the skip prefly true. Okay. I'll try this one more time. See, so yeah, I guess it expired. Block height exceeded. I have get that a lot on these, and that may be a result. Um, that might just be because we're using too small of a fee. Although, aren't we using the dynamic? We are using the dynamic priority fee, which should get it. But see, now after we got rid of that confirmation wait, we've just get the link and we control click. And then bam, there we go. There's the link and it was successful. That's it. That's it's working and very simple, straightforward. As long as you know if those couple of issues to, to kind of get past and let me know if it worked for you. Uh, what are you building with this, uh, radium swap, uh, program? Peace. Thanks for watching.